Hi everybody, this is Dan Stolbarger and welcome to this week's Kafir Middle East Update. It's the week of September 15th. And just as a reminder, make sure you go to our website at holygroundexplorations.com and there you can access the PDF PowerPoint that accompanies uh, this YouTube presentation. So with that, let's jump right into this week's headlines. Um, we spoke last week about the Israeli airstrike inside of Syria, and it comes as no surprise that both Lebanon and Syria have complained to the UN about the Israeli airstrike against the chemical weapons factory. Um, analysis, or analysts I should say, assume Syria and Hezbollah won't retaliate. In fact, Russia is saying they will do their best in keeping the lid on all of this against this IDF airstrike. Uh, but Hamas has basically said that Israel should be getting ready. Um, as we're talking about the threats to Israel, that's gonna be gonna fill this week's presentation. Hezbollah's leader, Hassan Nasrallah, is warning that a future war with Israel could, quote, open the way for hundreds of thousands of fighters, not just from Lebanon or Hezbollah or um, Syria, but from all over the Arab and Islamic world. They would all want to come and participate. When we think about the end of days, this is something that uh, we should be keeping our ears and eyes open. Um, Nadav Argaman says that the Gaza-based terror group is ready for a renewed conflict with Israel. And the head of Shin Bet Security Service said on Sunday that Hamas is currently setting up a base in Lebanon with Iranian support as part of its ongoing efforts to deepen its ties, its connections with the Islamic Republic's Shiite axis. Remember, uh, it's always confusing this war between the Shiites and the Sunnis. And again, uh, that's what's taking place in Syria, where on one side you have Iran, Shiite, and on the other side you have a variety of other groups. Um, Muslim Brotherhood, Al-Qaeda, ISIS, more on the Sunni side of things. The frightening thing is, is that the only thing they hate more than one another is Israel. And you always wonder, why don't they just focus their attention and come together? The answer, obviously, is because the Lord is the one that holds all things in his hands. And then uh, speaking at a conference in Herzliya, Dr. Sebastian Gorka a former deputy assistant to uh, President Trump, talking about the moving of the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, has basically come out to say this would be a done deal, except there's a strong resistance uh, by the Obama administration bureaucrats that are still working in the executive department. So with everything that's going on, we'll be mindful to wait and see when this move takes place. Remember, it's been, we've been told it's not a if, it's a when. Uh, the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Ron Dermer, his quote, Israel hopes that the passage of the Taylor Force Act will finally send a message to the Palestinian Authority that the days when it is uh, internationally acceptable to pay people to kill Jews are over. Remember, this bill has major support from both parties. Uh, Taylor Force was a, an American that was stabbed to death on the boardwalk uh, between Tel Aviv and Jaffa. And uh, bottom line is that Congress is now saying it's crazy that we're allowing a boss to pay stipends to terrorists. And so this is making its way through our Congress to shut off funding to the Palestinians if this uh, principle or whatever continues to be the status quo. Now, <laughs> I'd like to get some good news, but not quite yet. 
adding to the stabbings and car rammings and explosives and other types of barbaric attacks across the globe, food poisoning could become the newest tactic used by ISIS. Uh, British and American supermarkets could be the upcoming target of this new form of mass, mass casualty attacks. Uh, and then finally, for this week's uh, headlines, the director of the Shin Bat uh, Domestic Security Agency blames an uptick in the attempted terror attacks during the month of July and August on the tension surrounding, and this comes as no surprise to us, to the people that understand biblical prophecy. But because of the unrest on the Temple Mount, this is the flashpoint. This is what causes the cauldron to boil over. And uh, this, by far and away, is not over at all. Uh, the crosshairs of the enemy is always going to be on Jerusalem, but more specifically on the Temple Mount. Well, now, if you have the PowerPoint presentation, we get into the main articles of this week. I won't be able to go through them all, but you'll at least have them if you have the PDF PowerPoint complete with pictures. The first is a question is whether or not terrorism is on decline. Um, Nadav Argaman, he's the head of the Shin Bet, he told government ministers that Israel has prevented 200 terrorist attacks from more than 70 local terrorist cells since the beginning of 2017. He reported that Hamas is making efforts to carry out terrorist attacks in Judea and Samaria to undermine the relative stability, but is having a difficult time doing so because of the steps of Israeli security forces. So don't be fooled, even though things seem to be calm and under control, that's not because they're not making the attempts. That's because of the strength of Shin Bet and Mossad. Um, the whole two-state solution, um, it seems that Trump is less optimistic about this, but again, it seems like he's coming out and speaking to the Saudis by saying, we're going to give it our best efforts, but... And so I don't know if he's uh, uh, really optimistic or not. I'll let you read that article on your own. And then this recently from England, from the... Uh, the British news source, The Telegraph, basically reports that North Korea has had uh, help by Iran to gain uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, senior Whitehall sources told the Sunday Telegraph, it's not credible that the North Korean scientists alone brought about the recent technological advances, but Iran is at the top of the list of countries suspected of giving some form of assistance, while Russia is also in the spotlight. Michael Oren, uh, his quote, British officials say that Iran has assisted the North Korea nuclear program. No big surprise, but here's the question, what's the world really going to do about it? Um, peace partners, once again, you know, the uh, Palestinians are always being propped up as the uh, moderates, the Fatah sort of thing. Uh, but when you listen to the garbage that comes out, I don't know how anybody in their right mind can think that there's any possibility of any kind of lasting peace. The Supreme Sharia judge of the Palestinian Authority has accused the UN ambassador to Israel as being motivated by Satan himself. Um, it, again, it seems like the US and Israeli officials go out of their way to speak about Abbas with respect despite his being a Holocaust denier and a financier of terror. But this respect is only a one-way street. This top advisor um, gave a televised uh, sermon last Friday and talked about America's top diplomat to the Jewish state having a satanic urge in leading and guiding. Uh, once again, how do you make peace in that situation? Um, 
there is a, as we're talking about the Palestinians, um, the district governor of Ramallah, Leila Ganam, has declared that the Palestinians will stay faithful to the, quote, path of the martyrs whose blood perfumes the ground. Um, on her Facebook site, she's got uh, palms or whatever. Once again, we're dealing with uh, Palestinians that have a cult-like fascination with the so-called blood of the martyrs. And these, once again, as we've said, are the so-called peace partners. Uh, for all you Barbie fans, take a look at this uh, uh, last article that we have about the uh, teen talk new Barbie. Uh, Quran quoting hijab sporting Barbie lookalike recently hit the shelves. Um, the Islamic is the, and the question is, is this Islamic doll on its way to America? You'll note the, uh, the head covering, uh, the doll is actually called Jenna, the Quran teacher. And, um, as it speaks, uh, it asks questions, it doesn't ask questions like the old Barbie about, you know, do we have enough clothes or, uh, we should have a pizza party. But Jenna recites four verses from the Quran. In fact, the doll's ability to train young girls is its primary selling point. So uh, again, there's a YouTube video out on this and you can see the pictures. And remember, uh, Netanyahu has made it clear that unless the educational system stops in terms of um, just brainwashing children into a cult of hatred, the legacy of hate, that there's no real possibilities of peace. And then our quotes of the week, um, Netanyahu has said, the airstrike in Syria last week is a loud shout. It's um, with many implications in an ongoing war that Israel cannot and will not lose. He goes on to say, Israel has red lines. And when they're crossed, we will take action. And then I found it interesting because, you know, sometimes we give you the moderate side and sometimes we give you the right wing side. Um, when it comes to the settlement issues, and this is the, the nature of the two-state solution, as you know, um, one of the leading rabbis in Israel made the following comment. He said, evacuating these settlements in the West Bank and the mountains of Judea and Samaria is worse than eating pork on Yom Kippur. <laughs> when I read that, I thought, wow, um, there, there's no middle ground here. There's no opportunity to find some sort of uh, compromise in all of this. So that's this week's Middle East update. Again, uh, encourage you to go to our website. There's some teachings there as well. A new teaching out by Troy Anderson that's about experiencing the miracle of Israel today. And we do have two seats left for our upcoming Off the Beaten Path tour. Uh, take a look at that. And with that, Shabbat Shalom. And a reminder that next week is the beginning of Rosh Hashanah. And we'll speak more about that in next week's teaching. Shalom.